All right, hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, this is Mr. Zare from Landrum Middle School. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at uh, a specific sensor that you have with your LEGO Mindstorms EV3 robot, and that is the touch sensor, or as some people might call it a push button sensor, okay? And so we're gonna figure out how we can use that, how we can program that, and I'm just gonna go over some real basic things, and you guys are gonna be creative and figure out other ways to use it. Before we do anything though, I wanna remind you, make sure that you're always using your brain. Make sure you think things through. It's gonna make life a whole lot easier. So, what we have here is we've got my programming window completely open. I have a blank project, blank program. So I know that this project is gonna be all about the touch sensor. So the first thing I wanna do is just go ahead and save it. I'm gonna save this project as, and my file name is gonna be touch sensor, okay? Uh, project and remember that a sensor is nothing more than an object that takes in information just like sensors for us are our sense of taste smell touch sight it's where we gather information so sometimes our robots are going to gather information so they know what to do next all right so uh, I'm going to save uh, saving uh, naming the program file for later but we'll start with our start block. So we already have our start block. It's, it's ready and ready to go. So we've gone through kind of our actions already. Uh, the, most the most important actions we've gone over, the medium motor and large motor, and we're actually gonna use uh, the large motor uh, as a way to test to make sure that our touch sensor is working correctly. So, uh, our touch sensor is actually going to be found in the flow control tab. And when we go to the flow control tab, we don't see a touch sensor, but the place that we're going to actually find it is in our weight programming block. So, I'm going to drag the weight programming block up, and right now it's set for time. But, if I click on the little clock here, I can expand and see all the other sensors and options that I have available to me and the touch sensor is this one right here. Now, there are two different options for every sensor. There is always gonna be a compare option and a change option, and this gets very confusing, and sometimes it's even difficult for me to explain it under certain circumstances. But there's, we're just gonna give a basic rule here. Anytime you use a compare option, what you are looking for is you're looking for a specific value to occur, okay? And then for a change option, what you are looking for is you are looking for a change in the object or change in the sensor and you set what that change should be or we can consider it a range. Now, in the case of the touch sensor, we are only gonna use compare. If we use the change option, that would allow us to collect data and we're not interested in doing that anytime soon. So let's not worry about that. So I'm gonna go to the compare option and we only have one option and that is state. So I'm gonna select that. Now, when it comes to the state, uh, the compare state option, we've got that here. And then the very next thing is we've got the number one. If I click on one, I see three different possibilities. Zero is if we release the button, one is if we press the button, and two is if we bump the button. So in our case, most of the time we're always gonna use pressed as our option. So I'm gonna make sure that that's one. Now, I also wanna take a look at my port and figure out exactly which port my touch sensor is plugged into, and it is plugged into one. If I wanted to change it, I could change it to whatever port I'm looking for. Okay, and the way I wanna write this program is I want the program to start, but nothing will happen until I press the button. Once I press the button, I'm gonna want the robot to move forward, run one rotation, or actually, you know what? I want the robot to move forward forever until I press the button again. So I'm gonna go back to my action tab and I'm gonna choose move steering and I'm gonna bring up the move steering block and I'm gonna turn it to on because I want it to run forever. And I'm gonna have it run forward, half speed is fine. My ports are B and C and that's correct. So right now, the way I have this program set up, it's gonna start, it's gonna wait until I press the button. When I press the button, 
both motors will cause the robot to move forward forever. All right. Now, how do I get this thing to stop? Because right now, this won't run because there's no stopping point. For me to get this to stop, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to bring up another weight block, and I want it to stop when I press the button again. So I'm going to hit touch sensor. I'm going to go to compare state, and I'm going to make sure that it's one. And at that point, it should have something happen. And once I press that button again, I want the entire process to stop. So I'm going to make my move steering go to off. Okay. So again, we're going to wait for the push button. Once we press the button, motors will move forward. Until we press the button again, motors will stop. Let's see how that works. Okay, so we have our robot. We've already got our program and we've saved our project on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to the right to the second tab and I'm going to find the project that I just created, which is the touch sensor project. I'm going to open that up and I realized in my haste I forgot to name my program. So inside that folder my program is just called program. So that's fine but that would be something that I would need to fix later on. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select program. I've already got the program running. You can see that it's blinking but nothing is happening. So I'm going to press the button and nothing happened. I wonder why that occurred. Okay, let's see if we run it again. Maybe I made a mistake. Press it, press the button, and boom, nothing has happened. My program has stopped. Let's go back to the computer and see if we can figure out what our issue is. So here we are back at the computer, and uh, there's two problems. Number one, I forgot to name my program, so I'm going to go back and name that uh, just touch sensor. Okay, and then we noticed that whenever I actually ran the program, there was an issue. It did not work correctly. Now, here's something that you need to be aware of about all types of programming. It runs in a very linear or straight line fashion. And for example, in this case, when I press this button, I cannot press the button fast enough for it to not think, oh, the button's being pressed. If the button's being pressed here and we're waiting for the button to be pressed here, what's going to happen is it's going to jump from this first programming block all the way to this programming block because I'm still pressing the button, right? So if I want to use the same button to start and stop, I have to create some sort of buffer or something to prevent it from jumping from one button press all the way to the next button press. Okay, so Here's where we might want to use a wait time programming block. This is one way to do it. There are other ways to do it, but I'm just going to throw out this, this possible solution. I'm going to put in a wait time programming block. And, you know, maybe my finger is really slow. I can't press the button and release the button fast enough. So I'm going to make the time two seconds. So what should happen is I press the button. Nothing happens for two seconds the motors go forward and then it waits for me to press the button again. That two second delay should give me enough time to make sure that this thing works. So let's try this out, see if there's any improvement. Okay, so we're back at this for try two. Remember we just added in that two second time delay to make sure that everything works out the way that we had planned it to work out. So I'm going to go to the second tab for my project folder. I'm going to find the touch sensor project folder and this time because I named it correctly it's called touch sensor. I'm going to go down to touch sensor and I'm going to press it and we can see that the project or the program is running but now let's see if it works. I pressed it. There was a two second delay. Now the wheels are turning. How long will the wheels turn? Well unfortunately they will turn forever or until the battery finally goes out. So just so you can see, it is still running. So still running. The only way to stop this is press the button and now it's stopped. So the original behavior, although it made sense, required that time delay in order for it to work exactly the way that we wanted it. So let me just run that again just to make sure that we're clear. 
nothing's happening, I'm going to press it, then we're going to count to two before anything happens. One, two, now it's moving. The only way to make it stop is to press the button again, and it stops. All right? Okay, so now we're back at the computer again. It looks like everything that we planned and thought out worked the way that it was supposed to work. So what I just did was just show you one possible use for uh, the touch sensor. We used it to start a, a process and to stop a process. We could also use it to stop a process and make something change and then continue. Like for example, if your robot want, runs into the wall and it needs to turn 90 degrees and go in another direction, uh, we can make it start a process while other processes are occurring. So we have two things running simultaneously. I'm going to leave all of that information up to you guys to figure it out, but now you kind of have an idea of how the basic function of the touch sensor works. So at this point, I just want you guys to remember, make sure that you're always using your brain. Make sure you think things through and always, always, always try to do the right thing. You guys take it easy.